This week on The Review, the news you've been clicking and sharing, and how well does Al Jazeera cover women's issues? Hello and welcome to The Review. Last Sunday was International Women's Day, so this week we're taking on your views about the channel's decision to focus on women's issues in its coverage. Here's one from Diane Thompson via Facebook. She said, I would like Al Jazeera English to continue to focus on women's rights issues throughout the year. Is that too much to ask? It shouldn't be a one-off thing. Well, we'll be putting that question to the head of documentaries in just a moment. But first, here's a look back on the news you've been clicking and sharing this week. Abu Humam al-Shami was El Nusra Front's second in command. His death comes at a critical time for the organization. The waters here are receding for now, but the residents live with the constant threat of them rising again, shoring up their defenses, doing what they can against the ravages of nature. On Saturday, gunmen killed five people at this restaurant popular with foreigners in Bamako. Until now, the capital was sheltered from the violence in the north. For Niger, Chad and Cameroon, defeating Boko Haram is crucial. Just hours after, the group's leader pledged allegiance to ISIL, a move interpreted by the Nigerian military as a desperate attempt to draw ISIL into its operations. For more than a week, the protesters have been camping in Ledfadan. They're unhappy with the newly enacted education law. Hundreds of police charge at the protesters, striking and injuring them. In the four participating countries, about 5,000 soldiers and police officers are directed by the Safe Mekong Coordination Center. Their operations range from anti-trafficking to breaking up money laundering syndicates. One police officer was shot in the face, another in the shoulder. It happened at a protest outside Ferguson's police department in the hours following the announcement that Police Chief Thomas Jackson plans to resign. There's been an outpouring of comments, likes and shares about Al Jazeera English's initiative to highlight women's stories this week. The channel saw the broadcast of the controversial film Hip Hop Hijabis, which follows two Muslim women as they go on tour in Britain as a rap duo with a message. Here's a clip. <laughs> People feel that a woman being on stage is her kind of exposing herself. The voice of the woman, they say, is like part of her private parts that shouldn't be seen by the public. Many, many years ago when I met this Muslim lady, she said to me that the basics is that you have to cover your head. And of course, you know, you have to wear the, 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 the loose clothes as well. And then suddenly you got on stage. <laughs> and I thought, that is a conflict, isn't it? Is it just me or is it conflicting somehow? Comments ranged from Joe Berlaubo on Facebook who said, so nice to get an insight into modern Muslim culture. It is sad to see that the sisters have to battle to share such important messages, but this documentary is a testament to the changing ways. To Dalian Zhu, who said, these two Muslims became hip-hop duos because they're living in a free country like Britain, but would that happen in Saudi or Iran or Qatar? And from our website, from the Al Jazeera English website, there were dozens of articles and opinion pieces this week about women. One in Dubai about breaking the taboos of single mother adoption. Another one from Malaysia about their first female mixed martial arts fighter. And a photo essay from Idlib about the Syrian women marking International Women's Day in a cellar to shelter from shells and stray bullets. This is just to name a few. Al Jazeera's online magazine also devoted an issue to the subject titled What Women Want, which sparked some controversy online with comments from Jamal Yimri'i, who said, Al Jazeera reporters are always reporting about ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda. When did you guys get time to report about women? And Julianne McGeorge said, I don't like the whole premise of this, as though men are offering a limited window of generosity to women and they may humbly ask for this or that to be granted from on high. Well, we decided to take a few of these questions to Ingrid Falk, the head of documentaries here at Al Jazeera. As we heard earlier from Diane Thompson, she wrote to us, I would like Al Jazeera English to continue to focus on women's rights issues throughout the year. Is that too much to ask? It shouldn't be a one-off thing. So, Ingrid, is it a one-off thing? Uh, it's not a one-off thing, and it's certainly not too much to ask, and I think it's exactly the, the right thing. We chose to focus on women for International Women's Day because it is a time to celebrate achievements and think a lot about you know, the road ahead. 
So we really do that, and we do it in a lot of ways, sometimes exposing the tough, ongoing, huge challenges. We know that violence against women and gender-based violence is a huge global problem, and that we address. Sometimes we address it directly, and sometimes we address it in other contexts. Well, when having to address these issues and pushing boundaries, how well do you think the Al Jazeera network covers these women's issues? I think we are aware of it, and I think we are doing pretty well and I think sometimes we really get it right and sometimes we really miss it you know we get it wrong and so the stuff that we get wrong how can Al Jazeera do better it's partly what stories we cover but a lot of it is how we do it whether by covering a story we are empowering or disempowering the key contributors whether we are looking at something in a broader context or whether we are niching something so that it actually becomes uh, you know, not not broadly um, appropriate. And the issue of representation of women on screen and, you know, the issues that surround women is in our minds a lot. You know, we get a lot of comments from viewers who say that we maybe don't cover women's related issues from the Gulf as much as we should. What do you think about that? Um, it's a good point and maybe we need to address that more. We, we have some productions in process at the moment that do that. We certainly focus quite a lot on the Middle East. Um, whether we've focused enough on the Gulf specifically, maybe we need to address it. One of the films that aired this week on Al Jazeera was Hip Hop Hijabis, and it received a lot of reception online from viewers. A lot of people thought that maybe it didn't represent a very wide view of Islam, it was more narrow. What do you think? I think it probably did represent a narrow view in the sense that it was a film about two very specific young women hip hop artists who express, in fact the whole film is about their journey finding themselves within Islam as musicians. So it, it probably, I, I'm not surprised that it, it's had some negative um, responses. I mean we are not, our point isn't to offend people, but we are always trying to show a range of perspectives and without doubt some people might find some of what we do offensive. Mm. It's not that that's the purpose, right. it might be one of the byproducts. Actually we think of these things quite sensitively. So even a film like that which might be pushing the boundaries of some people's understanding of, of their religion, we will still make sure that it's not in terms of the imagery or, or elements of it are, are, are sensitive, absolutely. One of the films that pushed boundaries that's been all over the news and many different media outlets was the film called India's Daughter. Now you know I'm sure the background yes. of this film, it, it went out on BBC but was pulled from a lot of other media organizations and basically the premise is that a rapist is being filmed, is being interviewed. <coughs> Why doesn't Al Jazeera do something like that? Do you pick and choose who you give a platform to to speak? I think the point is the context and how these things are done. Now, we've done a load of films that deal with various kinds of rape and gender-based violence all over the world. I think one of the things we think long and hard about is, is this film going to re-victimize those people mm -hmm. who've had the experience? And that's something we try very hard not mm -hmm. to do. We always try and find an angle to a story where even people who've suffered extraordinarily heinous uh, experiences have some agency over their lives. So we choose the perspective and the angle. We absolutely do cover these subjects. Um, we've featured rapists in a context of a film, but uh, in fact we have done films about why men rape, um, not particularly in my department, and I think it's important to understand what's going on. It's all about the context. It's, it's raised really important stories. Sure. Who do we put in our films? How do we... Um, it's a lot to think about. Yeah. It's a lot of options And it's to not wait. me judging that film, but it's, it's y just yesterday we had an editorial discussion about how we as Al Jazeera choose to frame and position people within the stories about these very, very difficult issues. I don't think it's easy, I don't think there's an absolute right or wrong, but as long as we keep having those discussions and we think carefully about the impact of every choice we make. Thank you for all your comments that you sent us directly this week. We do hope you keep them coming, and we're looking into your views. Hunter John Winton Burke wrote on Facebook, a very important subject and one that should be kept at the forefront of opinion. Kitty Jeragui wrote, I think AJE actually does a great job of covering women and women's issues. It's just not always advertised that way because they're covered as world issues and people issues. And Sheldon Walters wrote, I would love to see more coverage on women's issues on Al Jazeera, but I still give credit to Al Jazeera English for having a good representation of female journalists both in the field and behind the anchor desk.
Thank you, Sheldon. Let's take a quick look at where our female correspondents have been filing from this week. Discrimination is still all too common for many Afghan women, despite the gains they've made. Those who are suffering the most are ordinary South Sudanese. In the past year, there have been at least 400 cases of severe acts of violence. The past few days, activists have been trying to evade police. Right now, the Obama administration believes it can go on its own. Tunisia says it will continue to welcome Libyan refugees. But last week, the Philippine government declared an all-out offensive. Public spaces in Nepal are very male dominated. We had a really nice surprise visitor in Doha on Thursday. <laughs> Correspondent Peter Gresta returned to the Al Jazeera newsroom for the first time since his release from a Cairo prison last month. Peter had spent 400 days behind bars with his colleagues Bahir Muhammad and Muhammad Fahmi, who are still awaiting a retrial in Egypt. Peter had this to say to the Al Jazeera staff. I'm feeling very flattered, very honored, and very moved by this. I'm also feeling quite humbled because, to be honest with you, what we did when we were in prison was simply do our best to survive. The support that you gave us made it a struggle between a set of principles. It meant that we were defending those principles. That's really what made it survivable. The knowledge that we weren't in that cell alone, the knowledge that all of you were there with us. That's all the time we've got this week. Thank you so much for joining us, and please do keep those comments coming. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash aje.review or on Twitter at ajreview. We'll see you next week.